I had two structs that represent smart contract programming languages, Solidity and Viper. And let's say that I wanted to create a function that takes in the smart contract programming language, either Solidity or Viper, and the file path, and then it will output the command to compile the code at this file path. So for example, if I pass in Solidity into this function, then the compiler might print something like sulk hello.so. And for Viper, it might print something like Viper hello.by. But what would be the type so that this function can accept both the Solidity and the Viper struct? If you put in Solidity, then it only accepts the struct Solidity. And likewise, if you put in Viper, then it only accepts Viper. So what we want here is to be able to create a function that can accept both Solidity and Viper. The way we can accomplish this is by defining what's called a trait. Trait specifies a behavior that the type must implement. To define a trait, we start with trait. Let's say compiler. And it's going to have a single function, a function called compile, which will return a string. The first input will be a reference to self. Self here refers to the type that is going to implement this compiler trait. Okay, so we now define the trait. Let's implement the trait compiler for Solidity and Viper. We'll start with Solidity. We do that by typing impl implements compiler for Solidity. And then we'll need to implement this function called compile for Solidity. Let's say that the command for the compile is format sulk followed by file path. Here we won't worry about the actual command that will compile a Solidity contract. I want to focus here on how to define a trait and how a type can implement a trait and then how we're going to use this inside a function so that it can take in multiple types. We implemented the compiler trait for Solidity. We'll do the same for Viper. Change this to Viper. We need to implement the function compile. Let's just change this command to say Viper. Okay, so now both the Solidity and the Viper struct implements a trait called compiler. Now we can modify this function signature so that this lang can both be Solidity and Viper and also any struct, any type that implements the compiler trait. And to do that, we'll start with the reference. Reference to impl and then say anything that implements the compiler trait. A reference to anything that implements the compiler trait. Okay, and how do we return the actual command? Well, notice over here that all of the type that implements the compiler trait has a function called compile. It takes in the type, the self, and the file path, and it returns a string, which represents the command that will compile the code at file path. So all we have to do here is say lang.compile. And we can do this since the type lang will implement the compiler trait, which will have a function called compile. And then we'll pass in the file path, file path. Also remove the return statement. We'll use the implicit return to return the string. So that's how we create a function called compile, which can take in different types as long as it implements the compiler trait. Okay, next let's call this inside the main function. So first I'll initialize the Solidity struct and the Viper struct. We have Sol representing Solidity 0.8 and Viper representing Viper 0.4. Next, let's call the function compile. And to show you that this function compile can take both the Solidity and the Viper struct, we'll call the function compile twice. Once on the Solidity struct and once on the Viper struct. And let's print out the output that comes from calling the function compile. Print ln compile solidity. And then we'll call compile on solidity. So, and let's say that the path is hello.so. Okay, and then we'll do the same for Viper. Viper compile Viper. Let's say that the file path is hello.by. Let's execute this code. Execute the code and we get compile soul. Soul hello.so and compile Viper. Viper hello.by. So this was an example of creating a function that can take in multiple inputs. And we did this by defining a trait. And instead of passing a concrete type inside here, we passed in a trait. Here we said any type that implements the compiler trait can be passed as an input. Okay, and to show you another example, let's create a trait called test. Trait test. It's going to have a single function, fn test. Takes in self. This will be the type and the file path. Again, let's make this str and then return the command that will test the file. Now here I want to show you what's called a default implementation. For example, we can say format, let's say test followed by file path, file 
Next, let's implement test for Solidity and Viper. Let's start with Solidity. Say impl test for Solidity. And then we'll implement the function test. Let's say for Solidity, we'll say format forge file path. Again, the command that I put in here doesn't really matter. It's just an example of how to use the traits. Okay, and then let's also implement test for Viper. So say impl test for Viper. And this time, let's use this default implementation. We do that by not defining any function test inside here. Okay, so now let's call the function test on Solidity and Viper. We already have the struct initialize, so let's just call the function test. For the compile example, we created a function called compile, which takes in a trait called compiler as input, and then inside it, we called lang.compile. We can create a function for test as well, or we can just directly call lang.test. Here, let's say soul.test. And then over here, we can say viper.test. Okay, let's execute the code. And then we get test solidity, forge hello, test viper, test hello.by. Since we didn't define any functions for viper, the default implementation of the function test was called which was this test followed by the file path, the file path being hello.by. So in this video, I gave you some examples of how to use traits to define a behavior for different types. And it's useful since you can now pass in different types into a function as long as the type that you pass in implements some kind of trait.